Hello and welcome, boy. Oh, go away. Exit full screen. What up? So obviously we just had the challenger stage of Le Major done, finished. Ding 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 ding. So we're gonna have a little discussion video on. I've done my predictions video. Literally just did my pickums. That video is also coming out. I wanted to discuss the challenger stage a little bit, talk about some of the narratives, because I think some really cool stories popped up out of this stage and some teams who didn't make it definitely deserve talking about, right? They deserve their moment in the sun because they contributed to what was a pretty banger stage, actually. I thought this was really good for a challenger stage of a major, um, better than some of the other challenger stages we've had so far, for sure, in previous majors. So let's just crack into it. Um, we'll go with some of the qualified teams first just to like get them out of the way probably should be pretty quick to talk about because we're going to be talking about them more anyway because they still got the major um legend stage to come obviously right so we'll look at g2 g2 actually had a pretty um convincing run through the challenger stage that spirit game should have been more one-sided than it was if we crack it open and have a little look um Hang on, let's go to the match page because yeah, this was this was uh, a problem. Just the T side collapse, um, honestly. And you could turn around and say, oh yeah, but G two did the same thing to Spirit on their T side. Not quite, because like Spirit didn't win the pistol, forced back, managed to make the opening scrappy, and picked one up at the end. It's like a little bit of a different T side, right? Whereas G 2s it's like. You know, when you get an 11-4 CT half and then you win the pistol and convert, you you should be able to find two more, man. You should be able, even with some gimmicks, some rushes, especially on Dust 2, which is a gimmicky map, just playing off spawn, you should be able to pick up two more rounds. So, yeah, th this one was like a classic G2 moment. Like, I don't know how they do it, man. This is so G2. They just they just pick a half where they're like, yeah, we we'll just fuck off. Let's just all disconnect for this half. We'll come back, come back at the end and do the overtime. I, d I don't know, man. It's so weird you two doing this. Um, you know, Hunter obviously absolutely banging uh, the Kovac twins, kind of twins. They're not twins. Fuck it out. The Kovac cousins kind of bailing G2 out a little bit on this one. Um, but yeah, apart from that, honestly, G2 pretty good. Um, you know, the end series uh, was pretty comfortable in the end, to be honest. Um, they ran ends very close on Ancient and you know actually pretty comfortably one on dust two and mirage um nico's banging hunter's playing well monacy is playing well and taking a, a shit ton of entry jewels by the way like a crazy his entry stats uh for this event are absolutely bonkers so i think this trio is doing what they need to do for g2 i think alexi b looks pretty comfortable and confident calling it's all kind of coming together for g2 in a way i wasn't sure it would for the major but I think this G2 lineup are probably always going to be this kind of team. I think they're going to be big, a big tournament team, right? They're going to be a team that probably drops some games in other events that you're like, oh, really? Come on, guys. Um, and, you know, the pro leagues and, and such of this world, I don't think they're ever going to be the events that G2 are going to be very motivated for and, and succeed in. I think it's these big LAN events like Katowice. We saw them make the run to the final you know, like the major here, I think these are going to be the events where G2 thrive, to be honest. I think that's just always how it's going to be with this G2 lineup. Obviously, next up, we have Vitality. And Vitality had an even easier run through the challenges. Honestly, it was a bit of a breeze. The first half, we're not going to talk about the complexity game. Complexity fucking sucked. The first half of this game was competitive and interesting, and it looked like we might be in for a good game. The problem is Astralis did one of their T sides. Um, yeah, this is a common thing. We'll get to Astralis later. This was a bit of a, uh, a commonality between the Astralis. I've got like a hair in my mouth. Um, but yeah, Vitality, there isn't actually that much to talk about because they kind of breezed through... Um, you know, obviously lost the first map here to Forza, their own pick, but then pretty comfortably took Dust to a Mirage. So, yeah, not too much to write home about with Vitality. The one thing is I don't see Masuta playing as well in the next stage as he did in this stage. Um, and that's why I've put Vitality to not go through. I know they cruise through this stage, but I don't know. Don't think they had the toughest record. 
they played three teams um, that didn't make it. So, you know, it says something about their record, right? Whereas G2 played two teams that made it. So, you know, just by comparison. In fact, G2 played three teams that made it. So, yeah, you can see by... If you want to talk about the strength of schedule based on what we saw in this event, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious who had the harder run. Next up, we got Ents and... Obviously, they lost to G2, but again, pretty convincing from Ents. The three games they won were all pretty solid and convincing. They had a bit of a wobble in this Bad News Eagles series on Dust 2. Bad News Eagles nearly mounted a pretty huge CT side comeback, but in the end, I think Ents were pretty comfortably the better team in this series. The nuke was, was you know, 69 looks all right, but it wasn't really that close. Um, and this Dust 2, like, once Ents... This Dust 2 was actually probably the biggest like identifier of what I think is wrong with Bad News Eagles, is it was just some mistakes, some missed grenades. Uh, Synopsy absolutely flopped a B-hold where he tried to go for a trigger discipline play. Just a couple of like base, not basic mistakes, probably not the right word, like for that's what happened to Synopsy on B, but just, just mistakes that, that cost Bad News Eagles that game. But I, I think had it gone to Ancient, I think Ents would have been fine and... Yeah, ultimately, I don't think Ents had that many troubles getting through. The G2 game was the G2 game. Spirit, this was obviously one of the big uh, shockers, and they were really good. Yeah, spanked Imperial, ran G2 really close with a massive comeback on the back end of Dust 2, and obviously beat Eternal Fire. This is the problem a little bit, is that Spirit, I don't know why everyone was willing to play them on Dust 2 when they showed that they were really proficient on the map. And then I think they got Dust 2... No, they didn't get Dust 2 in this series, so fair enough um but yeah just just that is a great run from spirit no doubt and they deserve full credit the youngest team um i think at the major full stop and they did this and it it's really impressive obviously um patsy looks like a real find um degster's the truth always has been i love me some degster and magics has like his improvement from the previous iteration of spirit has been monumental um so i'm i'm like big on these boys i think spirit are, are really good i was really really shocked and surprised by how good they were problem is they got to play dust two three times uh so we haven't really seen their map pool tested that much that is where i reserve judgment a little bit on how good a spirit really uh yeah they're not going to get to play as much dust two in the next stage i would be highly surprised but we shall wait and see either way banging run from spirit outsiders yeah um again i wasn't the most convincing three and one actually getting run so close by mbr but we know what outsiders do they're the fucking kings of the 30 round game paid by the round uh yeah got spanked off the server by ents basically outsiders beat three well, they beat two not-so-great teams. They beat one team that were, like, looking really promising and then kind of slipped off as the tournament went on. And the one good team they played, they got spanked by. I think this is basically where outsiders are right now. I think they're they're just too good to get beaten by the, the and too experienced at this level to get beaten by teams like Complexity and MIBR. But they're just not in the right spot right now to beat teams like Ents. I think Outsiders will probably go out two and three on the next stage. I think they'll beat the two teams like, I don't know, they'll face Spirit and Bad News Eagles and they'll beat them and then they'll lose to the three better teams they play, in my opinion. Um, this is just indicative of where Outsiders are right now. Um, I want this whole shit with Outsiders to get resolved because I think I think that lineup is good. Kicker, Jame, Flit is a really good core, I think. And I want Yekindar to go to a team where he can be happier because he doesn't look the happiest right now. I just want that situation resolved for everyone's sake. It's 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 kind of... They're doing well under the circumstances, but I think you can tell particularly Yekindar's not very happy. And um, it's, it'd just be nice to see them get that shit resolved. Imperial! Kalao! Vamos! Like, god damn it. I can't believe they did it. They got absolutely bodied by Spirit on the first day. And you were like, Christ, the pensioners can't do it anymore. They're too old. Leave them alone. But then, no. They were like, fuck it. We're going to go through, boys and girls. Beat Liquid. Liquid were looking pretty shaky at the start and grew into this event. Beaten by Bad News Eagles. That doesn't surprise me because Bad News Eagles, I feel like, have the style that 
Imperial don't want to come up against. They're going to be very confrontational. They're going to force you into lots of aim-heavy situations and, and duels. Sorry, my microphone. It's a bit wonky. Um, uh, This is where you're a bit like... A really kind fifth round matchup. Pretty kind... I think uh, last round matchup, you would have said Forza would have a style similar to Bad News Eagles, except just better, in my opinion. Um, the problem for Forza is they just were like a rabbit in the headlights in this matchup. They got 16-5 on both maps. It wasn't even close. They Honestly, the Forza inexperience showed here. This was not the same Forza that were 2-0 and and a map up against Vitality. They just, the confidence, I think, was rattled. I think the pressure got to them, and it really showed. But fair play to Imperial, man. What an amazing story this is. Just a beautiful tale. I can't believe Fallen's done it again. I can't believe he got the band bad together and has actually done something meaningful by making it to the Legend Stages Major. I didn't expect they'd do it. I'll hold my hands up and say I didn't. Um, it's just super exciting to see, and... I don't think it's going to go any further, but hey, they could totally prove me wrong again, man. And I'm all here for it if they do. I really am. Bad News Eagles. Yeah, similar story. Uh, they played one good team and got beaten. I won't say like convincingly, but I, I do think Ents were the only team that were going to win that series. And it was basically one half of Dust 2 that Bad News Eagles looked good on. Um, outside of that, a really close game against Eternal Fire. They got it over the line. Fair play to them. Very close. Well, not very close, but quite a close game against Imperial. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. This is really weird run when you think about it because Forza didn't make it, but they kind of got spanked by Forza on Inferno. Um, and then this MIBR series was... <sighs> was a weird one. I don't know, man. I don't know what to make of Bad News Eagles. They're, like I say, when I watch them, I go, I oscillate between being like, wow, they're actually really good. They got a lot of skill. I really like their confrontational style. Um, it's very high octane. It's very, I think, tough to deal with. It feels like a wave of just wave after wave of pressure. Like they're always putting the other team under pressure. The problem is, is then I oscillate to being like, what the hell am I watching? This makes no sense. This is like a really weird style that I think if teams had more time to like watch them and, and understand how bad New Eagles play, they'd get countered more and they would lose. They would struggle more than they have. I don't know, man. Again, this is another fantastic story, a fantastic narrative. Bad News Eagles deserve all the praise that they're going to receive and have received for making it this far. Um... I just don't know where to peg Bad News Eagles, honestly. I can't figure it out. I, I just as easily could see them going through the next stage as I can seeing them get eliminated 0-3. So, well played, Bad News Eagles. How much further they can go? Oh. And obviously, the final qualifier, Liquid. Um, just fair play to Liquid. Going 0-2, reverse sweeping. Reverse sweeping it against Astralis as well, like the final hurdle, who previously were a bit of a bogey team for liquid a team that they really struggled to beat nitro has completely shocked me like actually looks like a competent and even good player at times and i like when he first came over he was fucking shitty poo he was so bad when he first came back the one thing i will say for liquid is they did get like something of a kind draw Except for this, Astralis was probably the hardest draw I think they could have got because it was like Forza, Imperial, Bad News Eagles, MIBR. Yeah, this was the hardest draw they could have got in... So fair play on this one. Like, they, they beat the best team left at this point in the tournament to get through. Um, I don't see them going further in the next stage. I still think they have obvious flaws. You know, 9Z um, are not ready as a team yet. You know, they're, they're a newish lineup and all that. Um, complexity, I think, a, a doo doo. I think they're just not very good. Um, so yeah, well played, Liquid. They deserve all the credit for getting this far. I don't think they'll go any further. That's it. And as for some of the storylines, um, you know, we won't look at too much detail. Forza, man, so heartbroken for Forza. Um, obviously, massive Forza and Jerry fan did an article about it before the tournament. 
I think they're a fantastic team and I think there's still a lot of potential and they will go on hopefully and do good things in the rest of the year and we should hopefully see them uh, at the next major it's just heartbreaking for Jerry again to get on the cusp of qualification have a very winnable match for qualification and then kind of choke it away they even took maps off of two good teams in vitality and outsiders so yeah i think they can be proud of what they did at this event and at the end it was just inexperience that got them so you know disappointing for forza but i'm sure they'll bounce back and i'm sure we'll see more of forza throughout this year I i'd be surprised if not Astralis, man, what a disappointment um, to have two series, one against Spirit and one against Liquid. If you'd have said to Astralis before the tournament, you'll be 2-1 and you'll have two series chances to get qualified and one will be against Spirit and one will be against Liquid, they would have bitten your hand off and said, yeah, that will definitely see us through every day of the week. In the end, I think they mental boomed in the back end of that Liquid series. Farley and Zip couldn't hold a sight to save their lives on the CT Half of Ancient. Blame F even started doing some weird shit. Um, obviously, Blame F fantastically rated, by far the best rated Astralis player across, across this event. The thing is, I saw a tweet and I kind of agree with the sentiment is when Blame F is absolutely like banging, like 1.70 rated, you rarely ever see his team win. Um, I'm not saying that Blame F carrying is a problem per se, but it, it does feel like when Blame F is having to go super ham, it probably means that there's something wrong with the rest of the structure in the team. Um, so yeah, disappointed for Astralis, they probably would have backed themselves to go through, particularly considering the situation they found themselves in. MIBR, I think this is probably fair. Two and three is probably what you would expect. Um, ran outside is really close. This is the thing that's going to be really disappointing for MIBR is it was like quite close in. They would have felt like they could have won this Astralis game. They would have felt like they could have won this Outsiders game. Um, and then it was kind of disappointing that they weren't more competitive in the Bad News Eagle series. I think MIBR are a good team. I think they had the start of their year disrupted a little bit with Cello not being able to attend like blast for example with them a little bit more time with this lineup and um yeah i could see them doing better you know if this had been like a few months down the line and they'd had another european event to kind of like work on some stuff i think mibr could have very easily qualified through this stage ahead of like an imperial or a bad news eagles or a liquid a hundred percent i don't think mibr are uh, are much worse as a team than any of these three, for example. I think it, these three, like this bracket here, you know, you could have any combination of these six teams, I think would have been fair, as in they all look pretty decent. It's just for different reasons they either succeeded or didn't. Uh, and then moving down to look at uh, Renegades were just poor. Um, you know, sorry to my Aussie mates. I know that, that some of you follow me on Twitter and whatnot and might even end up watching this video. But yeah, Renegades were just not good enough. Um, I think they uh, had some issues with like a lot of traveling going on, not a lot of chance to practice. So totally understandable. But it's just so disappointing to see the team that's like absolutely banged out the Oceanic region for the past like two, three years just never really get any traction internationally um i wonder if some of these teams maybe need to stop like farming spots in australia um or in their regions and like get over to europe stay for three four months do some events even just even just grind out some multi vibes cups and stuff because you'll get good practice from tier two europeans in officials and then you'll get to scrim some of the better europeans i think that probably would be the best thing um for the region but yeah just really disappointing i think uh and then 9z yeah they were close against my br but apart from that they just kind of showed that they were a bit inexperienced not really good enough for this uh this kind of stage ihc man uh yeah they could have won that against complexity and then the imperial series could have gone uh either way obviously these maps don't look like the closest score lines but actually i ihc were very much in them i think um score having his worst series when he's kind of like their star player was was a problem for them for sure ihc are another team where like i'm convinced with more experience and stuff they would have been more competitive and could have really uh threatened for qualification so impressed with what i saw from ihc and i'm going to be keeping an eye on these guys in future i hope that this lineup can stick together and they get to attend more 
like tier one level lands because yeah they were really fun to watch as well like loved watching ihc eternal fire yeah just ended up um just again not being good enough really i think they lack a proper caller to be honest no offense to Woxic, but i just his calling i don't think is good enough um and i think they've relied on being one of the best of the tier two teams by just outskilling uh their opponents like emor um Woxic and Zantares, particularly Zantares and Emor, um, look really fucking good individually and probably can hang at a tier one level. It's just if you're based like on firepower, this Eternal Fire lineup doesn't have enough firepower to go for that against tier one. So yeah, kind of representative, I think, the way the way they finished. And then the final team, Complexity, just not good. I just don't think Complexity are any good at all. Um, the, this is probably, for me, the final nail in the lineup's coffin. Um, get Junior out. Um, revamp the playbook because it's so fucking basic and simple. Especially on T side, man, it's just not good enough. It's not going to get the job done against Tier 1 teams. Um, or even Tier 2 Europeans are not going to like flinch against Complexity. Um, they did have like a somewhat tough schedule having to play of the four games they played two of them were against vitality and outsiders um but when you get ihc and liquid and you can only just squeak a 16 13 against ihc and then you just kind of comfortably get put to bed 2-0 by liquid yeah complexity were not good enough and i would have said they were down there with 9z and renegades honestly um as like one of the three worst teams at this challenges stage uh, so that's it, boys and girls. I haven't done a scores on the doors for this one because obviously these guys all have still got their major ahead of them. I probably will do a scores at the doors at the end of the event, and I may include these guys in it as well because they did attend the major, and you know a lot of them do deserve some credit for what they showed here at this major. So probably will do a scores on the doors, including these teams, but I'll do it at the end when we're all done and dusted with Le Major. You know the drill, boys and girls. Like, comment subscribe give me a big hug like virtually don't don't come near me please i'm not giving you my address uh, and if you didn't like it you're probably complexity because i kind of shit on you this video um get good just get good